thank you, Mustafa, for uh, taking the time out to join us today. Let's uh, focus on the uh, markets now, but I'd like us to quickly talk about the oil and gas uh, players. We know that uh, we're having an uh, earnings season coming up. Uh, now, downstream oil and gas players took, uh, had, uh, took a beating in the second quarter of this year following lower business activity. So there is an expected recovery in Q3 compared to Q2. Uh, could you just provide perspective on that for us? Um, we saw, obviously, in the second quarter, uh, that was when the coronavirus really hit the global, the global economy, really. And uh, from March and about April, we saw a lot of lockdowns start getting implemented around the world, uh, including Nigeria. And of course, our players here in Nigeria, like Total, uh, Double One PLC and Adova, um, they had to deal with the lockdowns that the government imposed. And also, they had to deal with uh, the, uh, the the lack of uh, uh, cars and public transport that would uh, require the petroleum products. And as well as, let's not forget the um, ATK, that's the uh, jet fuel, the, um, the airlines, which uh, had to uh, um, also be stopped and suspended due to the Due to the coronavirus. So uh, these were the things that basically impacted business activity uh, for the downstream players and uh, led them to see such uh, low um, margins and such um, um, such bad performances in, in the second quarter of 2020. Um, however, moving into the third quarter, we expect to see uh, a rise in, in performance. We expect to see revenue go up. We expect to see players like Adova, which have been driving for uh, solid market penetration, uh, really leverage and the ext extensive retail footprint to be able to, you know, gather a lot of revenue now that um, that the lockdowns have been have been have been eased, and uh, we expect business activity to really pick up in the third quarter of 2020. Now let's quickly talk about uh, Sepla. You did mention in your note to us earlier that uh, the company is expected to record a lower production, mainly due to the OPEC's, uh, OPEC plus supply cuts. Now we've seen uh, oil prices continue to oscillate back and forth. Of course, uh, still subject to some uh, some of the shortings we've seen recently, and of course we know as uh, typically due to some geopolitical tensions. But of course, OPEC plus is still struggling to keep all prices as high as they can. Just quickly speak to uh, Seplet, uh, what this means for them, and of course, uh, the broader oil market. Yes, absolutely. So Sepla, um, that's our indigenous uh, upstream player here in Nigeria that's listed on the exchange. Uh, they, were, they were hit, of course, by the uh, low oil price environment, um, especially in April. Um, on the 21st of April, we saw oil prices go to a year low of about $19.33. Thirty and uh, in April, uh, oil producing nations globally uh, ramped up production in anticipation for the cuts that were to be implemented from May as agreed by uh, OPEC+. Plus. Um, Nigeria churned out about 1.7 million barrels per day. Uh, that's ex-condensates now, um, according to OPEC in April. And in addition, uh, Nigeria did not fully adhere to the OPEC plus agreements and you know, thus exceeded the production quotas for May and June. Um, working interest for SEPLAT was thereby not really impacted by the OPEC plus agreements um, as uh, working interest came in at about 51,000 barrels per day uh, as at H1 2020. Uh, and that's still within the company's uh, 2020 guidance of about 47 barrels per day and 57, 47,000 barrels per day and 57,000 barrels per day. Uh, with an increased adherence, however, now, and an expression by the Nigerian governments and uh, other nations like Iraq, uh, which didn't necessarily uh, commit to the OPEC plus quotas earlier, uh, Nigeria's July output uh, came in at about 1.3 uh, million barrels per day, ex-condensates. Um, and while Nigeria makes up for the exceeding uh, supply limits in the third quarter of 2020, uh, CEPLATS we expect uh, uh, would cut production by about 20 to 30 uh, percent in July and August, which falls within Q3, and uh, that, would, uh, that would therefore pull the year's uh, uh, working interest production closer to the lower band of the group, group's guidance of about 47,000 barrels per day. So, despite uh, the fields like the Ubima field, uh, the OML 53, uh, which they um, obtained following that um, Ireland acquisition, we expect Seplat to still remain in a lost position. And uh, to, uh, to tackle the se second point you raised uh, about the global oil markets, um, generally the feeling is that at the moment, uh, traders are really priced in 
uh, all the different factors that really uh, contribute to moving the markets. Uh, at the moment, uh, global oil prices are about uh, 40, between 40 and 41 dollars uh, per barrel. And uh, they factored in, of course, we have the, uh, the United States election coming in in November. Uh, they factored in the fact that we're entering into uh, the colder, the winter months. So uh, energy usage is going to, is going to increase. Uh, the fact that Libya, um, they are seeing a lot of uh, um, their factions are coming to an agreement and uh, production is increasing now. It's about 300 to 400,000 thousand barrels per day uh, in, in that region. So uh, generally the global oil market, uh, just to put numbers in it now, we expect it to remain about the $40 range that it is now. We don't expect it to go much above it. And we also don't expect it to go uh, significantly below it, but just hovering around the current levels that it is, uh, that's our outlook for the global oil market for this year. And Mustafa, Mustafa while we monitor uh, events at international oil markets, let's talk about uh, I mean, here, our own market here, the petroleum industry bill to be exact, uh, we're seeing uh, lawmakers uh, uh, scrambling, you know, trying their best to pass it as quickly as possible. Now, we know that some of the sticking points in the past have been particularly around revenue sharing between the international oil companies, the host communities, and the government itself. Now, the government has presented this new uh, document. I'm just wondering how optimistic uh, are you and how confident should we all be in this particular document that it would address uh, some of those uh, arguments and the sticking points of the past that has taken us over a decade, you know, to put this document together and to ensure that we do, we begin to get the much needed investment into the oil and gas sector here. Yes, absolutely. Um, um, I am quite optimistic that um, this administration is quite determined to make sure that the uh, petroleum industry bill is actually actualized and actually implemented because of the legal framework that will really help to make the oil industry, you know, um, even attractive and because Nigeria is also um, in a time whereby we need a revenue. And uh, one of the things that the petroleum industry bill will see uh, to help the Nigerian uh, oil industry um, acquire revenue, uh, both um, from foreign and even local investors, is the marginal fields. So the marginal fields, we've only had uh, the rounds, the bid rounds done about maybe twice in the history, the first time in 2003. And, uh, you know, doing it again, uh, which will be facilitated by the petroleum industry bill. We see um, a lot of players coming into the market, um, into the into the um, oil and gas space, when wanting to uh, get this get this uh, get this field, you know, get this blocks. And of course, it will be indigenous players as well. So we'll be able to uh, really retain a lot of uh, a lot of um, a lot of uh, signature bonus. Um, and I I believe that there's also talks about increasing that signature bonus. Before was about uh, three hundred thousand, uh, three hundred thousand dollars, moving it to about five hundred thousand dollars. So that will uh, mean more revenue for the for the country generally, and as well as other things within the petroleum industry bill, which will help to uh, boost Nigeria's uh, standing in terms of um, uh, what's it really acquired from from its oil industry. Because at the moment, many many would argue that Nigeria is not even uh, an oil producing country based on our consumption. Why? Because we import. About, about 80%, and that's been even conservative, of our petroleum products. Uh, however, with the petroleum industry bill put into place, uh, that will put a lot of legal framework in place, which will make the, uh, which will make the, the um, oil industry, and I'm talking about the downstream in this particular point, more attractive, and we'll see a lot of refineries uh, uh, being you know, developed. And uh, at, at, at the, la the last report that was released, uh, by the DPR, that's the Department of Petroleum Resources, about 2021 20, uh, licenses, licenses were issued for uh, refineries to um, private, private holders, and just about four of them, just about four of them were either uh, in the process of being completed or completed. So the petroleum industry bill hopefully uh, would make uh, the people holding the licenses to these refineries to be um, encouraged to develop the refineries because one key factor uh, in light of uh, the petroleum industry not being passed is that the industry was still regulated. So they were not sure how much exactly they were going to realize at the gates of their refineries. However, with the petroleum industry bill put into place, uh, that would bring more, uh, more, more certainty, uh, if, if you will, or more confidence in the Nigerian oil markets, which would ultimately at the end of the day mean more revenue for Nigeria coming from the oil space. Okay.